in June, I went to Dollywood for my first time since 2016. Since this was my first time there in seven years, I didn't remember anything about any of the coasters at this park. I actually visited on two separate occasions in June, so I have plenty of time to experience all the park's coasters. In today's video, I'll be discussing how I rank the 10 coasters at Dollywood. Before I get into the list, I need to mention that there are some controversial takes on this list, and all I ask is that you respect my opinions, even if you disagree with me. Starting off the list at number 10 is Whistle Punk Chaser. This is one of many Zamperla family gravity coasters out there, so if you've ridden one, you've essentially ridden this one since they all have the same layout. This one in particular was way rougher than all the others I've ridden. There was a massive vibration throughout the whole ride, and it was not a very comfortable experience. Despite its fairly recent opening in 2017, I don't know why it's as rough as it is, especially since a clone nearly 20 years older in Howler or Holiday World had much less of a vibration than Whistle Punk Chaser from my experience. Not even to mention how the train flies halfway up the lift hill on the second and third lap. Whistle Punk Chaser is far and away the worst coaster a dolly would do to how rough it is, and there's no way I can put it higher than number 10 because of that. Number 9 is Blazing Fury. This is more of a dark ride than a coaster, but a few sizable drops toward the end classify it as a coaster. It's very similar to the original Fire in the Hole at Silver Dollar City, just without the splashdown. Other than that, there isn't anything else I have to say about Blazing Fury, other than it's a good ride to experience while escaping the heat or when inclement weather enters the area. Now we're getting into the park's major coasters, and before I reveal what I consider to be the weakest, I need to mention that I enjoy all these coasters. None of these are bad rides by any means, but something had to take the number 8 spot. For me, that coaster is Wild Eagle. This may be a controversial take, as some people rank this in the top 3 at Dollywood. Truth be told, Wild Eagle is the coaster I was least impressed by. This was the first of four B&M wing coasters to open in the US as of when I'm recording this, and it has a straight drop, which is uncommon for this ride model. This drop did have some decent airtime in the back of the train, but I prefer the wing over drops found on X-Flight and Gatekeeper because of the hang time. Wild Eagle has four inversions, which includes a vertical loop, zero G-roll, Immelman, and corkscrew. It even has a decent bunny hill, along with some swooping turns. Like I said, I enjoyed Wild Eagle, but I thought the other coasters at Dollywood were stronger than it, so that's why it's number eight on this list. Number seven is Fire Chaser Express. This Gerslauer family coaster is found just across the pathway from Wild Eagle, and it features two launches, with one forwards and one backwards. The backwards launch in particular is surprisingly powerful. Probably the only thing I remember about any of the coasters at this park back in 2016 was how intense the backwards launch on Fire Chaser Express was. The sudden acceleration in reverse caught me off guard back then, and even though I was ready for it to do the same in 2023, it still surprised me. The rest of the backwards section is so much fun. I got some backwards airtime and even backwards laterals, with the latter being so strong at one point that it almost didn't feel like a family coaster. The backwards section is great and all, but the rest of the ride could be better. The forwards launch is solid, and the Cheetah Hunt style switchbacks were good, but everything else didn't do much for me. The theming on Fire Chaser Express is great too, especially inside Crazy Charlie's Fireworks Emporium where the backwards launch is. There are tons of fireworks in this building, accompanied by an appropriate fire effect. Fire Chaser Express also has some vibration during some parts of the ride, and it's kind of annoying, but not horrible. This and Wild Eagle are very close to my ranking, but the backwards section is what puts Fire Chaser Express at number 7. Storming in at number 6 is Tennessee Tornado. This placement may also seem low, but I can see why other enthusiasts rank it higher. Tennessee Tornado is one of, if not the last aerodynamics custom looper that was built, and is widely considered one of the best, which I agree with. It's also smoother and more intense than several other aero loopers. The drop in the mountain is solid, although I wish the airtime in the backer was as strong as people said it was. Despite there only being three inversions, each of them pack a great punch. The pacing on Tennessee Tornado is great, and you never lose speed until the final breaks. Despite there not being any dead elements, Tennessee Tornado is a very short ride. That's the main issue I have with this ride, and prevents it from being ranked higher than number six, and being my favorite aero looper. I would personally take Canyon Blaster at the Adventure Dome over this, but Tennessee Tornado was a very close second for me. We are at the halfway point now, and taking the number 5 spot is Dragonflyer. This next generation Vacoma family suspended coaster surprised me with how good it was. The pacing was way better than Steel Lasso at Frontier City and Freedom Flyer Fun Spot Orlando, and it was also more intense, making it my favorite of that ride type. The first overbank turn was awesome, and the rest of the ride packed some good positives. I only rode Dragonflyer once across both trips, and I would have ridden it again if the line wasn't always long. However, my one ride was good enough for it to crack the top 5 at Dollywood, but it's nowhere near the top 4 in the park. Brace yourself, as it's probably the hottest take of the whole video. Coming in at number 4, is Thunderhead. This GCI was coming off a fresh retrack whenever the 2023 season started, and I thought it had a shot at being my new favorite GCI. It ended up being second for me, as I do prefer Prowler at Worlds of Fun, but I can see how several people call it the best one. The airtime was strong, the laterals were on point, and the pacing was great. However, it didn't feel quite as out of control as Prowler did, at least from my experience. The back row also rode a bit rougher than I was expecting it to, but it wasn't a deal breaker. Thunderhead was very close to breaking into my top three in the park, but I can't quite put it up there. I know several of you ranked this in the top two, if not number one in the park, which I personally thing is insane. Even though I don't have Thunderhead ranked as high as others do, it doesn't mean I dislike the ride. Thunderhead is solidly in my top 50, but I enjoyed a few of the park's other coasters a bit more, and that's why it takes a number 4 spot. If Thunderhead at number 4 wasn't the hottest take of the whole video, this next one is. As at number 3, I have Mystery Mine. I know what some of you might be thinking. How could you possibly rank the worst coaster in the park over the best? To be fair, I would have agreed with those that say Mystery Mine is the worst major coaster in the park after my first ride during my first trip in 2023. I found the first half to be full of headbanging to the jerky transitions and over the shoulder harness. 
but the second half was phenomenal, so Mystery Mind wasn't completely irredeemable. After seeing that it was a walk-on later that evening, I decided Mystery Mind was worth experiencing again for the second half alone. While I enjoyed my second ride much more than my first, it was the first few hours of my second trip in 2023 that elevated Mystery Mind into my top three in the park. Thanks to my top two in the park having much longer lines, along with Thunderhead apparently running bad that day, according to my brother, I marathon Mystery Mind five times in a row during the last 30 minutes the park was open since it was no more than a five minute wait. Even though the first half was quite janky and it didn't do much, the jankiness made it feel more chaotic and added to the fun factor. Then the second half became one of, if not my favorite sequences of any coaster ever. Between the thematic elements before, during, and after the second lift hill, the twisted beyond vertical drop, and then the double inversion finale, it's hard for me to think of a more memorable sequence on a coaster. While Thunderhead pulls better forces, I can't overlook the amount of fun I had on Mystery Mind. And as much as I like it, there are two coasters that I prefer over it. So Mystery Mind takes the number three spot. Number two is Big Bear Mountain, the newest coaster to open up at Dollywood. This opened just under a month before my first trip last year and was one of my most anticipated new coasters of 2023. It's a Vekoma multi-launch family coaster, and when I saw the animation for this coaster for the first time, I thought it looked like a next level Cheetah Hunt. I really enjoy Cheetah Hunt for the launches and sense of speed, and Big Bear Mountain takes that to the next level. There are three LIM launches, multiple low to the ground turns that pack some surprising positive Gs, and some of the most surprisingly good pacing of any coaster. When I saw footage of Big Bear Mountain testing, it looked like it was flying, and I imagine the sense of speed would be great. Seeing as a great sense of speed is one of the most important factors I value on a coaster, I knew I was in for a treat. While the sense of speed on its own is amazing, it's amplified by one of the best on-ride soundtracks of any coaster. I'd say it's second after the soundtrack found on the Incredible Hulk coaster at Islands of Adventure. You hear Ned Oakley speaking to you throughout the duration of the ride while you go off to find Big Bear, and the fiddle track that accompanies it is so catchy, it's impossible to not have fun with. Big Bear Mountain has some great theming as well. Most of it is found in the queue line, but there's even some during the ride. There are multiple different points where you can hear Big Bear roaring, especially when the train dives under the pathway before the final breaks at the end, and when it passes behind the waterfall towards the start of the ride. Big Bear Mountain is also one of, if not the smoothest coaster I have ever ridden. There was not a hint of roughness anywhere on each of my three rides. Much like Mystery Mine, I could ride Big Bear Mountain all day and not get bored of it. Even though it ultimately ranks at number two at Dollywood because of the soundtrack, I bet it was still ranking number two without it. That being said, it doesn't come anywhere close to my number one. Finally, my number one coaster at Dollywood is Lightning Rod. Up until recently, this was a unanimous pick for Dollywood's best coaster. However, I've started hearing mixed reviews on this new for 2016 RMC creation. Lightning Rod opened as the world's first launch wooden roller coaster, but the launch plagued this coaster with extensive downtime. In an effort to improve Lightning Rod's reliability, Dollywood replaced the launch with a high-speed chain lift for the 2024 season. Even before this change was made, I've heard a good number of people say they were disappointed in Lightning Rod. I did get one ride on this coaster in 2016, but I didn't remember anything about it prior to my 2023 rides that this placement is based on. Since this also was my first ever RMC, I really needed to rewrite it so I could see how good it actually was. I went into my 2023 rides with no expectations, and I was blown away. Now, I do have a whole separate review of Lightning Rod on the channel, so you guys can go check that out if you want more of my complete thoughts on it. To summarize, the launch was awesome, the pacing and sense of speed were outstanding, the airtime was amazing, especially on the quad down, and the last turn had some of the best positive Gs on any coaster. As of April of 2024, which is when I'm recording this, I've only ridden Lightning Rod with the launch. Even without the launch, there's no doubt in my mind that it will stay as my favorite coaster at Dollywood. That wraps up the list of my favorite coasters at Dollywood. How do you rank the coasters at this park? I'm curious to see how my ranking differs from those of you watching, so be sure to post how you would rank these 10 coasters in the description of this video. Also, be sure to let me know what park you want me to rank the coasters at, and I'll see if I can put a good list together. Of course, before you click off this video, please be sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already. Be sure to comment what you enjoyed about this video, and be sure to share it with someone else you may know. If you're new to my channel and like what you saw, please consider subscribing for more content like this. My goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I'd appreciate you subscribing and turn the bell on so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also have an Instagram account for the pictures I take whenever I visit a park, so be sure to check me out there as well via the link in the description. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you later.